All right, we are down to the final real thing, actually testing our hypotheses, which actually won't happen yet. We need to take care of some multivariate assumptions first. So, outliers and influentials uh, on the multivariate side. Really, I'm just going to look at the influentials, the Cook's D. So let's go do that. Let's go find that data set that we just created. That's this one, the YouTube series underscore C. I'm going to open that. Yes, let's see. Let me close the other one so I don't get confused. This is the old one. Close that. Here's the new one. All right. What we want to do is find out if there are influential records, respondents, in this data set. So the way to do that is just go to Analyze, <clears throat> Regression, Linear Regression, and in the Save, you're going to save the Cook's distance. Continue, <clears throat> and we'll go to the very bottom. Here are all those new variables we just created. Let's go look at our model real quick. Here's the model. We want to know if there are outliers with regards to um, the effects on information acquisition and decision quality. So here's what we'll do. We could do this one at a time, or we could do this multiple variables at a time. Let me show you the difference. Let's start with just usefulness on information acquisition. So here's usefulness as the IV. Here's information acquisition as the DV. And I've already chosen to save the Cook's distance. So I hit OK. Don't care about any of this stuff right here. I'm just going to um, jump over to the data set. Go down here, you'll see at the bottom we have a KU1, that's the Cook's distance number one. And what we're going to do is go graph it. So graph, chart builder, and we're going to do a simple scatter plot, drag that out. And the Cook's distance, KU1, is going to be our y-axis. And then ID is going to be our x-axis, and we'll hit OK. And here we have a plotting of those distances. What does this actually mean? Um, the bigger the number, the bigger the influence that record's responses has on the regression between those two variables, um, usefulness and information acquisition. Now, the literature says many different thresholds. Um, sort of an easy threshold to figure out is if it's greater than 1, the Cook's distance, if it's greater than 1, then it's pulling, it's leveraging, it's, it's an influential record. And so you have a... Uh, justification to remove it as it's very different from everyone else. Um, but in this case, look, the highest one is 0.16, roughly, this guy right here. That's a very small influence. And you can see there are many others that are nearly up there. If this were it's on its own and everything else were down here, I'd say, oh, that's probably influential, so we'd remove it. Um, but it's not. It's sort of hanging out with everybody else. So let's go try this for a few other variables. Linear regression and Let's see what happens when I put a bunch of variables in here. Atypical use, everything except decision quality, really. Um, useful is already in there. There we go. One, two, three, four. Did I miss one? Nope, I didn't. Okay, and run this. It's going to save that Cook's distance again. Let's go ahead and chart that. Chart builder. And it's going to be Q2 this time instead of Q1. Oops, uh, cancel. Get rid of Q1. Throw in Q2. There we go, ID is still there, hit OK. And here we have, there are two records that are fairly different from everyone else, um, but it's such a small value, 0.15. I would say this is not alarming whatsoever. So let's try this one more time with decision quality. And chart builder. And get rid of Q2, throw in Q3, and they are more abnormal, but not terribly abnormal. I wonder if these are the same guys every time. Let's go see. So one way to see this is just to go back to your data set, double click on Q1 here, um, and I'm going to sort this descending. And you can see, look, it is the same person. Ha! Almost. Wait, wait. This one's the same. This guy, record 3 here, is the same high value, above 0.10 every time. This one is above 0.10 every time. 
And this one is pretty close. It's these three guys right here that are the same ones on all three of those Cook's distances. Um, so, interesting. They are fairly different. So what do we do? Well, your choice here. You can say, we did a Cook's distance analysis and found that there were two or three, in this case, um, records that exhibited abnormal Cook's distances. And so we opted to remove them. Um, what will this do? Well, in a sample size of 380, it's not going to have a huge effect. But what it will do is it'll strengthen the regressions that you observe. Um, because these guys right here, they actually dilute the regressions a little bit. They're pulling that regression line away from its uh, quote-unquote true um, optimal line. So we could remove these. I'll go ahead and do that now, as so you can see it is an option. You just have to argue it by saying that we did a Cook's D and these were abnormal um, Cook's distances, whereas all the others were less than whatever it was, less than 0 0.05, 0 0.04. Uh, these were more than three, four times that up here at 0.15. So we remove them. So let me go ahead and do that. One, two, three. You're out of the family. Clear? Okay, our new sample size is 377. Let me file save this. Just in case, save as um, Cook. There we go, Cooks. Save. All right, and this is the one we're going to use moving forward. The next thing to do is multicollinearity. Okay, what you're going to do is again do a regression, linear, and in the statistics, you're going to choose collinearity diagnostics and hit continue. And we'll just leave it like this because everything's predicting these dependent variables. Hit OK. And you're going to look at this table right here, the coefficients table, and look at the VIFs and tolerances. So the VIFs, we're looking for values ideally less than 3, and we're good. VIFs, we're looking at values um, ideally greater than 0.1, which we obviously have. So we're good. Um, let's run this one more time with information acquisition, the other dependent variable in there. There we go, VIFs, it's the variable inflation factor, that's what it stands for. Again, less than point, uh, less than 3, so we're good. Uh, these are greater than 0.1, so we're good. What if we had a problem here? What does that even mean? Well, let's say we had high VIFs with joy and playful. That would mean that they um, are overlapping in the amount, in, in the type of variance, the Portion, portion is the right word, I guess. Portion of variance they explain in the dependent variable. And so they're somewhat redundant. In that case, we might want to consider either dropping one of them or turning it into a second order factor with both of those variables as the indicators of that second order factor. Luckily, we don't have that problem here. Okay, that's multicollinearity. And that's where I'm going to stop it there. And then the next video will be about mediation.